Over the past last year, I've gone from a 6800K, which is a six core Broadwelly Intel, to a four core Intel, which is a 7700K, and then to a Ryzen 1800X, which is an eight core 16 threaded beast. And now I use these in my main rig, and I talked about this in a video I did where I used Ryzen after three months. And between all those three rigs, I couldn't notice a huge difference in terms of slowing down or speeding up my workflow. But today I'm gonna to be changing over in this PC here, my main rig yet again. And this time I'm changing over to Coffee Lake with the 8700K. So a quick recap for you guys, the biggest annoyance I had with this system was the Elgato capture card not properly working sometimes with the X370 motherboard. So today I'm going to switch that over to the 8700K and see if that problem persists in the next few months. Also another problem has come up with the 4 Creators update and that is sometimes after I leave my computer AFK for a very long time, it'll just completely freeze and I'll have to hard reset it again. Though with that aside, let's start this process of changing things around. So currently with this build, I've changed the GPU around a lot and I'm actually really happy uh, with the Galax EXOC Sniper 1080 Ti. It's a white themed graphics card and it goes really well with this build. I actually like the white LED Vengeance memory and of course that X370 Tai Chi looks so schmick in this build. However, the problem is we're putting in the uh, Z370 Fatality and this time around it doesn't have any white on it at all. And so I've gone and bought some trusty spray paint over there, which is white. And we're going to quickly undo this uh, side plastic guard thing and also take off the heat sinks and the bottom heat sink and spray them up white. Just to bring a bit of white back into this build is if I put this in like that, it's going to not be really a black and white themed build anymore in my opinion. And yes, I know that cable there, it looks very off. That's just a temporary fix. I'll fix that soon. So you're probably looking at this CPU and this cooler and thinking, what did you do here, Brian? And what I did was, when I first installed Ryzen, I decided to do an experiment where I was testing MX4 versus liquid metal on the CPU to the actual cooler. And now you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't have aluminium and uh, liquid metal. And so what I did was I did the test and there were like no differences in temperatures between using uh, MX4 and using liquid metal on the actual uh, heat spreader. Now, of course, there is a big difference when you use it on the die. And that's because the heat's more concentrated. But on the IHS, where there's much more surface area, it's not such a big difference. And so I completely forgot about it. And um, now I'm paying the price. Well, not really. I mean, all it is is just a little bit of surface uh, corrosion. Get that off, slap some MX4 on, and it's gonna be good to go. So the switch is all complete. We've now got the Z270 heat sinks on the Z370 motherboard. So I don't know what we would call this, maybe a Z335 or kind of something like those uh, Toyota motors back in the day when people would put uh, a 1J head on a 2J block, I think it was, and they'd call it a, a 1J.1.5 or something like that. So we've kind of done that here. So we've got a Z335 motherboard. And why I'm doing this is because like again, I wanted that white and black aesthetic. And the problem was this time around, ASRock don't offer any white and black themed motherboards, I don't think, with their Z370 lineup. And it's kind of weird because I loved the look of the Z270 white and black. I also loved the look of the X370 Taichi. And now, of course, I know the white and black theme's not for everyone, but I'd like to see at least one motherboard in their lineup that kind of features this look. It really is good, really hits home for me. And also Corsair over here have provided their 960 gigabyte. They've sent out another one of these to the channel. So big thanks to Corsair. 960 gigabyte Neutron XTI. So I'll now have two of these to RAID 0 for two terabytes of SSD storage. So that's gonna be not only lightning fast, but it's gonna be great for video editing. They've also sent out some of their RGB uh, memory. This is DDR4 memory, 64 gigabyte kit. Now this stuff is literally like gold at the moment because of the price of DDR4 memory. So this stuff is so expensive, but it's really gonna help me do some uh, awesome video editing. And especially if I wanna put something in a benchmark rig as well, this is gonna help out a lot. But with that said, let's get this Z335 motherboard in.
So we finished the build and it's going really well. I mean, the whole build went really smooth. Everything's working, except we've now come into two problems. And uh, well, one of them's not really a problem. It's just something that I've got to make sure works before I do anything further. And that's just make sure that my crypto wallet can transfer over okay. So this is in the process of doing that now. But the second thing that we've got going on here that is a bit of a problem and a real problem is the drive configuration in the RAID controller on the AMD chipset isn't being read at all by the Intel chipset. So this is like really tedious. Even the RAID 1 drives aren't showing up at all. Uh, so we're gonna have to pull these drives out and then put them back on the AMD chipset and I can copy all my data over to a spare drive and then I can make the RAID arrays again on the Intel chipset. So maybe that's a reason why, I don't know, in the server industry, I don't know if that's one of the reasons why people just don't want to change hardware at all. So here's what we got now to fix this problem with the RAID. I've got a two terabyte hard drive over there and that's just a drive that's running off the main chipset. So it's running off a different SATA controller. So that's just going to be a standard drive installed normally like any drive on AHCI or IDE. And then we're going to uh, get all this data off these drives and copy it to that drive, just the stuff that I need. And then I'm gonna reset the RAID array and hopefully it'll be happy days. You can probably tell by the look of my face that we've come into more problems. And I mean, yesterday we had the GT1030 on that HP machine, and that was the biggest nightmare. It was a huge failure, but this time around, we kind of got like a semi-fail, so at least it's better. Now with the RAID array, uh, basically I've put them in RAID 0 and RAID 1. I like to get extra performance out of the RAID 0 array, especially on the mechanical drives. And then the RAID 1, of course, it's the double backup, it's the mirror. Uh, but this time around, yeah, you got drives disappearing and on top of that I've installed the RAID drivers when I'm installing Windows and then it gets to 0% and it just locks up and then if I re restart the computer the, Even the drives in the RAID array will disappear. So I'm waiting on a uh, BIOS update to fix that up um, Also even possibly a driver update itself uh, From Intel, but at the moment if you guys are getting on Coffee Lake Just be careful if you want to use a RAID setup. I mean <laughs> It's pretty ironic that Intel's calling this in the BIOS Intel Premium RAID. I mean, yeah, that's premium, all right. Just drives disappearing out of thin air and then causing problems. But anyway, I was going to say, the differences so far, the first difference I do notice between the Intel rig and the AMD rig is for some reason the uh, Intel rig boots up a lot faster, even with the RAID option enabled. So it quickly initializes the RAID controllers fast. Uh, so I find the Intel systems do boot up a lot faster than Ryzen. Um, of course, this is both on ASRock boards, so maybe it's just the ASRock boards. But also with the Ryzen thing, I'm actually impressed with how uh, stable Ryzen got and how quickly uh, stability was introduced on their lineup of CPUs and motherboards. That was really good. I mean, even when it was first released, even though there was some problems, it still didn't stop you. Like, I didn't get anything like this, so... Uh, the AMD RAID controller is really good. Uh, the Intel Coffee Lake RAID controller, I mean, please fix that as soon as possible. Like, it's a real headache, guys. I'm just surprised that it would come out on the Z370 motherboard because they've already kind of, wouldn't they have experience already with Z270, Z170, which is very similar. So in a few months time, I'll report back probably with another big video like I did with the three months on Ryzen. Um, tell you guys the update on what it's like to be on the 8700K versus the Ryzen system. But anyway, besides that, the rig is running okay now. I do have to reinstall Windows on the SSD, the, um, the NVMe drive. Uh, that is a problem in itself because it's got the old AMD install on there. I just don't have time to reinstall at the moment because I've got to go to Bangkok for the Galax OC event very soon. And with that, it's, it's just all a nightmare. I picked the worst time to upgrade my machine. I didn't expect to get into these this many problems before I left. But I guess that's just how it is a lot of the times. Every time you're in a crunch, it's just like, if things can go wrong, they do go wrong when you're time strapped. But anyway, guys, if you've got any problems like mine, at the end of the day, I would be more upset. I would be more angry if it wasn't for this. I mean, look at this. This is the gold mic now with a mic flag on it. So when I go to the Galax OC event, I'm gonna be using this. 
and we're gonna see people's reactions. They, I think they won't be able to handle this thing. But also besides that, if you've got relationship problems or you've got computer problems, a gold mic with a mic flag is gonna fix it. <laughs> but if you've got car problems, <laughs> the mic ain't gonna fix that, I'm sorry. Venting that rage is the only thing that'll fix that. But also before I get on out of here, I wanted to talk to you about the uh, main system and the settings I use. So usually when I tune my main system, it's very similar to the overclock tutorials I do. Like this system here is gonna be running at five gigahertz, probably 4.9 just for super stability. Like if I'm in the middle of a rendering a video, I just can't have it crash whatsoever. That's a lot of time lost if that happens. But also besides that, the main difference between the tutorials and everything that you see on the channel usually is the fan profiles. That's something that I don't really talk about a whole lot but it does make a difference. Right now I've reset the BIOS, so in the background the fans are actually at their default profile. But what I usually do is I go through and have them all at 20%, up until at least 55 degrees. And then after that, I'll just max them out. So basically when the CPU starts getting stressed, it starts getting hot, those fans ramp up. And that's pretty much only when you're in tense, a game that uses the CPU intensely or you're rendering the final project. Uh, basically times when I'm not recording or I don't really need to concentrate. That's when I have the fans spin down. So that's the main difference with my tuning my main rig versus what you see on overclocking tutorials, which is just to get the overclocks set in. And also the DDR4 memory, I do overclock that manually a lot of the times. Just depends on how much of an extra overclock I can get over the XMP profiles. I'm actually still tuning this DDR4 memory here. So I'll let you guys know in the comments how that goes. But also if you guys enjoyed this video, then be sure to hit that like button. Also let me know in the comments section below, what drive configuration are you guys running at the moment? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.